everybody, and thank you once again for joining me for this week's edition of the Rant Packs, the weekly show where I open my packs and I rant for a little bit about the state of the game. Um, really the state of online card games in general, or digital card games, uh, not just Magic because it does exist in paper form and digital now in this really awesome format. I love the arena. Um, for me, Magic Online wasn't quite there. I like arena. Um, I also play Hearthstone, so I'm interested in doing some sort of comparison between these two games now. Uh, for more of this content, I do deck techs, I do uh, draft runs, I do all the events. Subscribe now, uh, you'd be helping me out. It doesn't spam me or anything like that. Um, a user posted a question, I think just yesterday, day before. It says he's got 28,000 gold saved up and wants to know what the best strategy going forward might be for this amount of gold, which, which I appreciate this question because it's sort of a dance, right? I am happy at 12,000 gold right now. I've got 12,250. I'm happy there. I wouldn't be upset with like eight, nine, or 10,000 at all. I think that's a great place to start saving up for that. Now, you could save it all. You could bank it, keep it, store it, whatever, rat hole it, whatever word you want to use to describe that saving of that gold. Uh, and that would be fine. And you could save up for War of the Spark and then have 50, maybe 60,000 gold saved up for War of the Spark. That'd be pretty crazy. That's 60 packs. That's like two boxes, bang, on the spot right? If you get to 60,000 gold, uh, every six packs, you get a rare wild card. Every uh, 36 packs, you get a, a mythic wild card, right? So you're guaranteed roughly two mythics and 12 rare wild cards just from the gold, right? Just because of the way the system works with wild cards. And that ain't bad. Plus all, you know you're going to get a bunch of good stuff in, in that many packs. But in the meantime, the game is hard to play if you only have one or two top tier decks and if you're struggling to hit a top tier deck uh like i i've got i think my mono red deck is pretty good i do have four steamkins i've got four goblin chain whirlers i've got i only have two rekindling phoenixes and two scarg and hellkites but i do have the mythics to make them if i wanted to i got three mythics saved up um, but i think it's in a pretty good place right now i would consider it top tier for like red deck wins although you don't see red deck wins or red deck or mono red aggro in like the top fives for the tournaments anymore. It's all Boros, well, not even Boros aggro anymore. Um, it's Sultai, it's, uh, is it Drake's? It's uh, Esper Control is making a climb. A and I can't afford the land. It's the land, you see, that gets you. And so that's a good question. Um, I would not spend my gold if I did have 28,000 gold saved up, because what are you going to do to get, say you're going with, um, like, like you want to get, uh, uh, is it color? So you want to go for that, is it Drake's deck or, or the, uh, you know, the red, red, blue aggro deck with the, all the, all the Drake's that fly and the, you know, you know what I'm talking about that one. You've got to buy, uh, Dominaria for the land, right? For, for Sulphur Falls, I think is what it's called. It's a Dominaria card. So you, you're going to spend 18,000 of your gold on 18 Dominaria packs, and that would leave you with 10,000 left, hoping to get that one land. I, I wouldn't do it that way. I would buy only the most recent set released, and that's Ravnica Allegiance, and I would take the lands that come in this set if I get them and, and bank the wild cards. Um, but at this point, if you do decide to save that gold, no one's going to fault you for that. That's a wise choice to make. Um, I, I mean, otherwise... Otherwise, it's, it's you're right. It is so hard to get the land bases for all these decks. And then we end up playing tap lands, which is a little janky, and that's going to slow us down. And if you get slowed down by just one turn against Nexus of Fate, you're dead. So, And it's slow. It's a miserable, painful, slow death because I, that deck takes forever to win. And then the other thing I want to talk about is the ladder play. So there's one way to play this game, and I would like them to change that. I would really like to see Commander... Um, in, in this format, with this presentation of the game, that'd be pretty awesome, I think. Um, maybe, call me nuts, but maybe like group play? That'd be kind of fun. Uh, two versus two, three versus three, uh, like some sort of chat application added to this game where I could find a buddy, say, hey, let's play. The six of us are on. Let's do a, a draft with each other. I think that would be cool to do, just like chatting and do it like playing magic at a tabletop. Although, I wonder if they are worried about replacing the experience of a local game store with this version of the game. But I still think there's room for more play types rather than just. I mean, the only way to play the game is in the ladder right now. Either you're playing 
just for fun in play mode or you're playing in ranked and if all you do is play ranked games you will go insane that's that's how that happens um i hit mythic last season over the course of like pretty much over the last two weeks of the month and i played a lot it was it was kind of brutal but it was pretty rewarding honestly it was very rewarding uh to hit that hit that mythic mark um but now i'm sort of feeling like the drive to do it again isn't really there, honestly. Like, hey, if it happens, cool. If not, hey, that's cool, too. I hit it once, uh, and I happen to, like, document it on video, so I'm good with that. Um, but I am interested. I saw an ad for, for Hearthstone, of all things, and they said that they've shortened the climb to Legend. I've never hit Legend in Hearthstone, and I'd like to think that's an easier game to achieve that in, although Hearthstone, I was a free-to-play, mostly free-to-play Hearthstone player, did spend some money on it. And I never hit Legend, and I remember thinking how brutal it was for, like, budget players in Hearthstone. It was not as friendly as this game is, or as this game sort of feels like at this point. But the ladder climb back up to uh, Mythic is is tough. I mean, I'm like, I'm like Platinum Tier 4 right now, and, uh, and it's going to be that way for a while. So through this weird roundabout way, the Magic Arena folks have advertised this game through some prominent Hearthstone players, like Brian Kibler and Krip, Kriparian, um you know, and they did the events, and then I like I looked up Kibler, like, who's this Kibler fellow? And, uh, oh, it turns out he's a Hearthstone player. Okay, cool, what's he doing? And then he was playing some decks, like, oh, the game looks like fun. And Hearthstone, Hearthstone did something that Magic can't do, and they solved the mana issues. So, and this is actually how I play with my brother, where we'll play Magic together, and we'll just get an extra mana every turn. Like, we just add one. Colors don't matter, we'll just play for fun that way. I realize that's not, like, how they designed the game, but uh, it's kind of like a Hearthstone tactic that they do, and you don't get mana screwed ever. You never lose to mana screw in Hearthstone. Yeah, it's a card game. Yeah, there's random, you know, chance, and Hearthstone has a lot more random elements to it, and they don't have any uh, instance like control is a little different in Hearthstone. You don't really prevent the game from happening like you do in Magic, where it's super aggravating sometimes. So I get that. So I might explore that a little bit later on. Um, you know, maybe even maybe even this week I might go back to. Some of the tips and tricks for if you're a Hearthstone player, there might be some content in there. Maybe not. I don't know. I, I grew up with Magic, so this is uh, my game of choice. But um, that might happen too. So let's open some packs and see what we're looking for or really what I want to get out of this. Um, gosh, I don't think I need too much more. I know I need like Ethereal Absolutions, but other than that, I could use some Seraphs of the Scales. And then this set, Ravnica Allegiance, gosh, I'm kind of where I want to be with it right now, if not done. Basilica Bell Haunt. How, what an aggravating card to see in Esper, right? Rick's Mati Reveler. There we go. I need, yeah, three more of those and I'm all done. This is a card that's been coming out in Mono Red or Rakdos, really, uh, Rakdos Aggro for, or Rakdos Midrange is that deck. It's got, like, treasure chests in it. It's kind of neat. Treasure maps in it. Always need the land. Always. Terrific. Could use... Actually, if I get nothing but land, I'll be super happy. I'm not sold on Benthic Biomancer, guys. I'm really not. I know he's making an appearance in some blue decks and some merfolk decks, but I'm not. I'm not all that sold. And I have all the commons, I think. I'm pretty sure I've got all these. Uh, Ill-gotten Inheritance is actually interesting. I think there's some mono-black control waiting to happen. It'd be kind of fun. And I did get a Mythic again, so... It's kind of exciting. I like to see all these wild cards. I want to build up wild cards, too, for War of the Spark. Theater of Horrors? Actually, I needed that, too. Okay, so I'm actually increasing my collection kind of nicely. And then after this, we'll look at the Vault. Um, because I know I'm trying to build up the Vault. And last week, I think it was at 102.5%, 102.5. Another rare wild card. I need all those. I need those now for, for decks I'm trying to build now. I like Dovin's Acuity. This is sort of like... Um, uh, disinformation campaign for uh, Azorius, though. Sphinx of Foresight. Okay, all right. Not, I mean, not a great card, but I think there's. It's a forecasting four four flying. That's not bad. And my last three packs. I did. Uh, I won six packs from the last season's rewards, and then I got my three because I won the fifteen games. Another Tome of the Guild pack. This card's been coming up a lot lately for me. No, I could use Growth Chamber Guardians. 
Let's have some growth chamber guardians. Okay, not a growth chamber guardian. Oh, that's not a bad one. I like it. Another Rhythm of the Wild. Okay, that's my third one of those. So that's nice. Another Blood Crypt. Okay, cool. So two lands. That's terrific. I really like that. So let's take a look at our Vault progress. We are at 114.8. So we got... That's pretty surprising. 12% per week. So I mean nine weeks and I'll have a Vault. So I may have a Vault in time for War of the Spark to come out. That's super encouraging. Plus I got two rare Wild cards and four Mythics now. So that's kind of nice. I, I like that. 18 commons, so I can get all the commons I want. If I look at my uh, my collection so far for just Ravnica Allegiance, uh, collected and not collected, I think I'm in a pretty good place. I'm gonna zoom. We'll zoom out just so we can start seeing some of the grays. So Angel of Grace I need. Uh, Skatewing Spy, and this is all free to play, by the way. So I was able to get four, like four ofs in a lot of these, you know what I mean? Um, and I did apply the Planeswalker decks to my account also, which does help get some of these cards going. Zero Awaken the Earth Wilds. But it's coming together. You know, it's coming along kind of nicely. Um, I do want to scroll over a little bit more so you guys can see the... No, the lands are mixed in, aren't they? I think the lands are... Yeah. Azorius Guildgate. Um... I feel like we're kind of Orzov, Orzov. Yeah, I think the lands are alphabetical by by color. But I'm not seeing them. Oh, no, they're at the end. Okay, they are at the end. So a couple godless shrines, that's kind of nice. And I got a couple more Blood Crypts. That's really nice. Three? So I might be able to do some Rakdos business coming up if uh, if I feel like spending some, one rare. I mean, that's pretty good. I happen to get really lucky with uh, Breeding Pools. I did get four Breeding Pools. Um, so that's cool. But I don't have any... Oh, I do have, I've got one Stomping Ground. I mean, that's not great. Not great at all, but I do have one. And then I do have, like I said, four breeding pools, which I feel like I feel like that was kind of a stroke of luck to get all four of those. Still no gate colossuses, so I couldn't even build the gates deck without using four uncommons right off the bat. But I think I have those now. So I got something like a seven. It just takes so much. Like uncommons is really where I struggle most of the time. Uh, and rares, uncommons and rares. So uh, and I did, I used uh, wild cards to make four Hydroid Crisis. I think this is one of the safest wild cards you can craft right now if you're running blue, splash green to get Hydroid. If you're running green, splash blue to get Hydroid. Like, it's that worth it. Um, it's an amazing card all around. But that is it for this episode of the Rampax, guys. Do stick around for more content like this coming your way. Thanks so much. Have a good one.